Hello friends, my name is Katie Robinson and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to teach you how to DIY a wedding bouquet. I absolutely loved my own wedding bouquet um, and it was gorgeous. I'll um, drop the picture in here. But I wanted to share with you guys kind of how to make your own because I personally didn't think it was that hard. I think you can achieve something absolutely gorgeous, one of a kind, and exactly the look you're going for um, with a lower cost than if you purchased it yourself and very little hassle. So let's get started. So to start, I went out to um, Trader Joe's and just my local Wegmans or Whole Foods and picked up a couple different flowers to use for this. I let them sit in warm water um, for about a day because I really wanted the roses to bloom so they almost look either like really full roses or have more of a peony size to them because peonies are not in season right now so I picked up some floral tape over here at Hobby Lobby and I have my white roses I have some seeded eucalyptus right there just some kitchen shears you can also use garden shears which work really well for cutting larger stems like sunflowers and then I ran out to a field nearby. Um, I actually purchased these items for my own wedding because uh, Queen Anne's lace, which is the white flowers in the middle and um, some like textured seed pods and whatnot were not in season when I got married. This is Queen Anne's lace. It's a very delicate little flower. It's beautiful. I always thought it was from the fairies when I was little. And then I just picked up some really simple, um, a pop of color to do kind of a blush, um, champagne -y pink and white bouquet with a little bit of texture. These are just um, chrysanthemums from uh, Trader Joe's. So I got the ra roses um, from and the chrysanthemums from Trader Joe's, some stuff from the field, and some eucalyptus from Wegmans. So when you first pick up your flowers from the store, if the blooms are extremely tightly closed, especially on flowers like roses or peonies, I know my peonies for my wedding were almost all like closed little circular round buds, um, spherical buds, and I obviously wanted them to bloom and be full flowers for my wedding. If you pick them up and they're really tightly closed, put them overnight in some warm water. You never want to go to extremes of hot or cold. Usually they tell you to keep flowers in a cool, dry place, but steam, warmth, sun will make the flowers bloom if they're really tightly closed a couple days before your event. Vice versa, if the flowers are like reaching their peak, let's say you have roses. These roses are extremely bloomed right now. So let's say you have roses that look like these and they're like very close to kind of, these are I would say at peak for a bouquet if this was a wedding today, but if they're nearing kind of the peak of their bloom lifespan, I would put them in cool water, again not freezing cold, but I put them in cool water and I definitely keep them in a refrigerator overnight. You don't want to put them in a freezer and you also want to be careful of um, refrigerators that have vents at the bottom that are going to blow cold air onto the flowers because it can cause white and cream flowers to wilt and brown. So you have to be careful of that, especially with flowers. Um, that are made into corsages or dog collars or anything like a flower crown. Be careful of air vents because that can really hurt the flowers. So um, I put these flowers in some water. I've literally just been keeping them inside my house at room temperature because I wanted them to bloom overnight yesterday. And I cut them, as soon as I got them, I cut the stems at a diagonal because you want to cut a little ways up the stem at a diagonal and place immediately in water so you can actually cut fresh um you probably learned in bio in when you were in school um plants have a system of feeding themselves called called the xylem and the phloem and it's how they get nutrients up into the stem and they release things back into the soil so um if you cut that fresh it allows that uh plant to immediately start using turgor pressure to suck water right up the stem and feed that flower and keep it alive longer. So make sure you cut your stems at a diagonal um, and place them immediately in water when you get them home from wherever you purchase them. Really what I do is I'll grab kind of a few flowers to start in my hand and mind you we'll be trimming the bouquet as we go along like at the bottom so I don't really worry about the mess of stems at the base. I want this to be kind of a, a slightly full and relaxed bridal bouquet um, and I I'm going to wrap it in the middle so I'm not going to do a really tightly wrapped traditional bouquet it's going to be more of what I would call a romantic 
bohemian bouquet, not one of those giant boho ones that you'll see um, in elopement weddings, but kind of a, a nice size traditional one like the one I had at my wedding. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a couple of roses and we'll start from there. So you have your roses, they come like this and they have all the leaves. So you want to strip. I know the leaves are pretty and they add greenery and you're gonna add other greenery, but you wanna strip all of your rose stems or peonies or anything that comes with dense greenery and foliage like this, you're gonna step, strip all of the greenery off. now have um, the greenery removed from the stem so I'm actually gonna grab a couple roses and get started so you I always like to hold the bouquet in one hand as I start to make it and I try to think about um, basically creating um, different color groupings so if you clump three white roses together all you're gonna have is a clump of white so I try to disperse you know my colors let's throw you know a little taupe in here a little green in here so let's get started and you can kind of watch what I do I'm um, here I am holding everything I'm actually gonna hold it in my left hand so I can adjust with my right because I'm right-handed but you can do whatever feels more comfortable to you and again I wouldn't worry too much about um, the stem length because we're gonna adjust all of that as we go along so I do want, these are very, very tiny, um, so I'm actually going to try to, sorry, it's a bit windy here today, I'm actually going to try to clump them together so they have a nice look to them. I'm going to pop a color so they aren't just one or two flowers. Here we go, here's this. And really always the beginning is the hardest part for me because um, you don't really have shape yet so it gets a lot easier as you move on so here I've got some white and some pink going on and I'm gonna add a little greenery I want to save the bunches of eucalyptus that look the most flowy for the outside edges I personally used silver dollar and seeded eucalyptus almost exclusively in my bouquets instead of the baby blue because baby blue is much too stiff and that's when you see bouquets that literally just have eucalyptus like sticking out at all different angles so I'm just gonna keep working on this and you guys can watch along So as we start to get to the outside edges, we're going to angle the flowers more. So these flowers that I just placed up here, the stems are shooting down way over here. That's normal because you want the bouquet to begin taking a rounder shape. So start to angle more. The beginning ones were pretty up and down. You angle more as you continue going with the bouquet. As you see flowers that you need higher, just kind of ease them up ever so gently and kind of bring them up and things that are too high you can push down a little bit as you move along. So like this rose is too low in my opinion so we're going to bring it up a little bit.
And then at the very end, I really just fill the outside kind of with that seeded eucalyptus. So now we have our bouquet um, and I'm holding it right here. So basically where you're holding it, to get a more relaxed look towards the top of the bouquet, you don't wanna wrap the stem all the way down. You do wanna definitely trim off these ends so it doesn't look like this, but um, around the center of the bouquet, about where your hand's holding it, we wanna wrap this area about this um, width with our floral tape. So let's trim off the ends and then we'll wrap it with the floral tape. Okay, so again, I'm going to, we have our ends trimmed. I'm going to wrap the bouquet right about where my hands would hold it with the floral tape. So floral tape is a little bit stretchy, but you wanna be kind of careful with it. Um, you can pick it up in the flower section at either Hobby Lobby or um, Michael's or really any kind of craft store. And usually the beginning is the hardest part because it wants to tear on you and you do want to get it pretty tightly wrapped around those stems. It is a little bit self-adhesive, almost I would say like saran wrap, like it doesn't seem like it would stick but it does. So once you got it started, you're just going to keep wrapping it around, kind of overlapping. Oops, see I ripped it. And you're not going to want to leave this exposed because it's really sticky. So if you're the bride, it'll get on your hands. If you're making it for a friend, it's going to get all over their hands and feel awful in the day of their wedding. So make sure you have um, ribbon or muslin or something. Um, I personally use silk ribbon from Amazon, like a raw silk ribbon for mine, which looked gorgeous. And it comes in a bunch of colors that I will link for you guys in the comment section below. Um, I'll link a bunch of my tools if you wanna DIY your wedding bouquet, kind of like I did mine. So, whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm just gonna kind of do it quickly for you guys. Look at that, we've got it wrapped up. You guys can kind of see, kind of see on there the way it looks wrapped. So now that we have it wrapped, we would then um, cover all of that green floral tape area with the ribbon that we had chosen. And then we just wanna kinda of loosen up the bouquet a little bit, allow it to organically, the allowing the, the stems to not be wrapped the entire way is what allows the bouquet to kind of just um, spread out a little bit more nicely and your flowers to like expose their full blooms. Flowers are tougher than we think, so. My Queen Anne's lace is a little bit wilty because I, um, didn't put it in water right away when I got it from the field. So this is pretty much the bouquet that I made for you guys. Um, it has, again, chrysanthemums, roses, Queen Anne's lace, um, some seed pods, and some seeded eucalyptus in it. And that is pretty much it. As you can see, it's a really great sized bouquet. Um, and I'm trying to think. Trader Joe's at Trader Joe's 12 stem roses I believe are $7.99. Um, I love their, I love a bunch of their flowers for wedding bouquets depending on the season they even have peonies. But I am going to link you guys the blog post below that I included all of my, every single flower that went into every um, arrangement we did for my wedding, the bridesmaids ones and the wedding bouquet. I definitely had some extra cool flowers in there that I wasn't able to find to make this video. I had some anemones, which are the cool flowers that have the black centers. I also had um, peonies and I had ranunculus as well. So I will drop a link to that blog post. If you guys like this video and would like to see more wedding planning and DIY videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see more kind of wedding themed stuff on how I made my day um, so beautiful and so special with very little money and uh, make sure you give it a thumbs up so I know what content to keep creating for you guys. Thank you so much for um, watching my video and getting to know me a little bit better. Again, I'm Katie Robinson with The Full Bucket Vlogs and always remember to find joy, spread love, and seek adventure. Bye-bye.